Carmelians, we praise and thank the Lord for the gift of our founder, Blessed Francisco Palau, to the Church. Francisco Palau Iker was born in the town of Aitona, Lerida, Spain on December 29, 1811 to Jose Palau Mianao and his wife, Maria Antonia Kerr Esteve. Following the custom of the family and of the place, Francisco was baptized on the day of his birth at St. Antolin Church in Aitona, Diocese of Lerida, Spain. On April 11, 1817, he received the Sacrament of Confirmation. Francisco had a happy childhood together with his siblings. There were nine of them, and Francisco was the seventh child. As a child, his parents gave him good religious education that imparted reverential fear of God. After his initial studies in his native town, he moved to Lerida in 1825. He was helped by his married sister Rosa. There, he would continue his studies. When Francisco was 17 years old, he decided to dedicate his life to God. He entered the diocesan seminary. The parish priest in their town gave him a recommendation in order for Francisco to get full scholarship. He took up philosophy and theology, but when he turned 21, he realized that he was called to become a Carmelite. On October 23, 1832, Francisco left the seminary for Barcelona to enter the Theresian community. He began his novitiate at St. Joseph Convent in Barcelona as Francisco of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph on November 14 of the same year. Then the revolution came out. Aware of the pressing peril, Francisco nevertheless dedicated himself to religious life and made his profession on the 15th of November, 1833. When I made my religious profession, the revolution already had in hand the fire ban for burning all religious establishments. Ordained as a deacon on the 22nd of February, 1834, Fray Francisco, along with other religious, was expelled from the monastery. Rabid crowds attacked the convents of Barcelona and set fire to them. He was 23 years old when their convent was on flames. On one instance, Francisco lingered behind to help an old religious who was unable to make it to safety alone and they came out unhurt from beneath their wounds. When it was already impossible to return to their convents, as the government took anti-religious measures, Francisco, in obedience to his superiors, went to Barbastro, where he was ordained as a priest on April 2, 1836. As a priest, Father Francisco had a taste of the bitterness of exile. He experienced unjust punishment and being slandered and persecuted by the authorities. Nevertheless, these things did not break his spirit. Father Francisco gave himself the contemplation and solitude, spending endless hours of silence and meditation. As a result of pastoral need, Father Francisco wrote many original pieces which occupy a place of honor in the religious and spiritual literature of the 19th century Spain. And among his works was the Mess de Maria, also known as the Month of Mary. And today, we are going to open the pages of this book.
Good morning, this is Sister Jeanette of Mater Carmeli School. How may I help you? Good morning, Sister Jeanette. This is Paul from Quezon City. Good morning po. Sister, upon browsing the internet, I have seen in your FB official account, Mater Carmeli School, that you are launching the Mes de Maria. Is it okay, Sister Jeanette, if I ask something about Mes de Maria? Sure, Paul. It's my pleasure. First question, Sister. What is the significance of launching this event? You know, Paul, Father Palau identified 31 virtues of Mary. And we feel that during our present time, this should be shared because it will be helpful in our Christian life. And you know what a virtue is? No, sister. Please explain to me the meaning of virtue. You know, Paul, according to Father Palau, a virtue is a quality that does good to the one who possesses it. It makes his or her actions mm. good. That's why the opposite of virtue is vice. Like, for example, if you have a vice in gambling, in smoking, and in drinking, it is harmful to you. Sister, what inspired Father Palau to write the message de Maria? And were there any instances of his life or situation that contributed to his uh, desire to write Mess de Maria? You know, it was during his exile in the island of Ibiza in Spain where he had an opportunity to observe that the celebration of the month of Mary was one of the unique expressions of the people in the island. However, it was practiced more of a pious exercise and it had no serious impact on the lives of the people in the island. So he thought that it needed renewal, a new vitality, and a suitable method so that it, it, it will be useful to Christian life. Mm. And why was the book entitled Mes de Maria? When translated in English, it means Month of Mary. So, Father Palau was inspired by nature. And you know what, Paul? He really took time and patiently find plants or flowers that would best symbolize the virtues of Mary. And this devotional, the Mes de Maria, is consists of offering flowers to Mary, which is a representation of her virtues. Sister, what does it teach young people of today? It teaches young people to imitate Mary's virtues. And you know what? Mother Carmel School has Marian devotion. So the best way to practice this is to imitate her virtues. I think that's all, Sister Jeanette. I gained a lot of insights from you today. Thank you so much for... You're welcome. And God bless. God bless for bye. bye. Most beautiful and skillful gardener Mary, I come before you in humility to entrust to you the garden of my soul. Dear lady, put it in order, cultivate it, and sow in it the seed of all the virtues. Plant in it the flowers that you're looking for, and put them in order according to their species. Command, Lady of the World, command, Queen of the Angels, and it would be transformed into a paradise of delight for you and your son. He proposed to undertake it, begin it, perfect it, and finish it. I offer these practices to your honor and for the glory of your Son. Amen. Virtue of the Week Charity In the garden of the Church, all the virtues, natural, supernatural, infused, acquired, intellectual, moral, Cardinal and theological, all have unanimously proclaimed charity as their queen.
What is charity? Why is she the queen of virtues? Charity is a virtue infused in the soul by which we love God with all the fullness of our affections for being what He is, the supreme goodness, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Charity brings along with her all the infused virtues, sanctified grace, and the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, and where she goes, others follow. To this virtue corresponds the gift of wisdom. Mary surpassed all men, women, and angels together in charity, and because of that, he was exalted above all of them. Flower of the Week The Rose We recognize and proclaim the rose as the queen of the flowers. The crown belongs to it by natural right. It possesses the most beautiful qualities of a flower. It is beautiful with sweet fragrance, pleasant and delightful in its species. It has a variety of colors and it grows into a rose bush with a marvelous abundance. It lasts throughout the seasons of the year. It is easy to cultivate, not delicate, resist cold weather as well as the rigorous heat of the sun. It grows in the fields and in the garden, and even it buds forth among the sharp and coarse thorns of the rose bush. It does not get hurt. Through all these characteristics, that distinguishes it. The rose deserves to be put at the center of all the bouquets to be recognized as the queen of all the flowers. The Rose to Mary Search in the garden of your soul for this most excellent flower. Without it, you will not be admitted in the Triumphant Church. Do you have true charity? Search well for it. If you have it, take it and put it into the hands of Mary. She will offer it to God, and from now on, the rose bush will be under the care of a very skillful gardener. What if you don't have it? Plant it, and see that it blooms in its time. Then direct yourself to Mary and tell her. Dear lady, I offer to you these roses, symbolizing my love for God and neighbors. I commit myself to love God with all the strength of my heart, to love myself for God's sake, and to love my neighbors as I love myself, and to love all things for God's sake, and to love God above all things. Amen.